Hey there everyone, this is Wes from Zarium Films. As you saw, we're going to be making a pretty cool transition today. It's fairly simple to do, but it, it also looks really cool. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind everyone that we do upload all of our videos, all of our new videos, every Sunday. You, there's guaranteed to be something new up every Sunday. So make sure you subscribe so you can get the latest videos and keep up keep updated on what's going on. And if you have anything that you've been having trouble with with Sony Vegas or Adobe After Effects, we also do tutorials. Well, of course we do tutorials, but we take requests to do tutorials. So send in your requests so we can help you out in any way that we can. Now, let's get started. I know you guys, I know why you clicked on the video. You clicked on the video to watch this, how to do this transition. So when you have the area that you want to go through, let's just get, the, let's just get this first part out of the way. On the exit out of the clip before you go, go to transitions, dissolve, and what, what type of dissolve do I want to? We'll just do a color more of dissolve. It doesn't really matter what kind you do. And just add it to the end of the clip. I'm going to shorten it. And that just will make it fade into the black. And I think it's really cool. And there's a whole bunch of different types of dissolves that you can do. And you can select dissolve, drag it over, and just put it onto the end of the clip, and it act it gives you a whole buttload of options, that you and you can customize it and to do whatever you want to do. As you can see, you can turn the colors up or down. You can change what type of dissolve it is. These these presets are just a way that make it easier to just drag what you want. It's kind of cool that Sony did that. And it just dissolves into the black. And then you're going to put the clip. This isn't actually where it's going to be. But there's a picture of a floppy disk on the top right hand corner. You're going to want to click on that. And this takes a snapshot of what you're doing. It, it takes a snapshot of the screen, so whatever you have up there. So I'm just going to label this as mask picture. Oh, my cap locks are all funky. Oh, well. It's still saving to the same place. And another th nice thing that Vegas did is when you do save a photo or something, it brings up a menu in Project Media that lets you see the snapshot without having to browse through all your files again. And we're going to drag this down to not onto this, but on top. Cre it creates a bar, a rectangle that's smaller, that automatically just creates a new video track. And this is where the fun part begins. You're going to click Control C to copy, insert two more video tracks, Control V to paste. And control V to paste on both layers and just move the actual clip out of the way and go to the beginning of the first snapshot click event pan crop and you're just going to need to find a big old general area and we're going to separate this into three parts. So we'll click on mask. And we'll just start with the sniper rifle. 
Now you do want to pay a little bit of attention to what you're masking. It just don't put a real sloppy job around it. Unless, of course, you don't want whatever you're making to look good, but I don't think that's the case. So we'll just go ahead and create a pretty nice mask around the sniper rifle. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to cover the area. It makes things a lot easier in the end, trust me. Okay, as you can see, it's surrounding the sniper rifle. It's not perfect, but that's where we're going to take care of. We're going to feather out. Let's see. Two uh, percent. And now all the edges are smooth and it cut is masked around the sniper rifle. It has a little excess, but you're not going to have to worry about that because as fast as it's going to be sliding in, it's not a huge deal. People aren't going to notice it as much. Then go to the next layer. Click on mask. And this time you're going to do the opposite. We'll mask around the opposite side of the sniper rifle. So we're doing a similar thing, but instead of doing the inside, we're doing the outside. And it seems I masked this in the wrong direction, but that's okay because we can just find another way to mask around this. We'll go up to here, the bottom corner of that cement. And I'm not sure what you're going to be masking exactly, but I'm just getting this out of the way. Uh-oh. I was masking it onto the line there. I'm trying to mask around it. And then I'm going to go up and around this pole. Over. And there I have the outside mask. But again, you can see right here, there's a bit of a black spot. That's where we're going to go feather type out. Let's say one point. Or... Sorry about that. 2.5. And there's no more black spot. And of course you're going to be masking something completely different. But that's... You just want to keep a general area. Uh, take three general areas where there's something outlining it. And you should get the same result. And we'll go on to the last layer. And this time we're just going to do the left side of the sniper rifle. And we'll go around the cement block again. Up over the scope. The last one's usually the easiest one, which is a good thing. And got a little bit of a black spot over there, but nothing to worry about. This one we're just going to go, actually we probably only really need 1.5. Now uh, that's not quite enough, so we'll just go for 2 still. Or 2.5, it can have its way. Hmm. Well that chunk seems to be bigger than 